Hello, Popper fans. It's Nathan Cleaner. Join me for round five of the second recorded Popper League. We are playing Kamilok Pestilence, and if we win this one, we did manage to go a nice 5 0. We haven't dropped a single game yet, so let's see if we can keep that up. Opening hand is very land heavy, but since we have this Knight's Whisper, we're going to be able to dig. Grim Harvest means we can start some of our Kamilok combo if we manage to find one of the Kamis, and a Thraven Inspector to help us dig, so. A little clunky, but I'm definitely going to keep this one. Forest and a Nettle Sentinel. This is going to be either Stompy or Elves. Both are relatively good matchups for us. So let's find out what we're against. Virtual Rangers, definitely against Elves now. So basically, happy to have this Prismatic Strands. That can help us fog our way towards uh, basically getting a Pestilence online. And here I'm looking to drop the Thraven Inspector, just to distance sensify some little attacks, and if he goes too, he or she goes too crazy on the Elvish Vanguard, uh, we will just chump block it just to preserve our life total as much as possible. 3-3, three, three, I decide that's not uh, big enough for us to chump block, and I'm going to go ahead and cast the Knight's Whisper there. We've got to make sure that we're drawing our cards, drawing to dig down to that Pestilence, and finding other relevant cards. We do find a Kami during all our three draws that turn. So we're going to go ahead and play that, even chipping for a damage, and this is going to prevent all the attack from this turn. Uh, basically our main game plan now, as long as our opponent does not find an Elvish Longbow, we're in a really good spot to just use our Kamilok uh, combo until we find a Pestilence to wipe away the board. Each Elvish Vanguards will get relatively large, but we do have removal, target removal to deal with that at some point. So basically the only thing we're worried about now is the Longbow. At least until we get our Pestilence online. So, uh, they're going to swing in. I'm going to go ahead and sack the Kami. No big deal there. And here we don't want to use the Grim Harvest to get the Kami back yet, because then we would lose the Grim Harvest. So this is where we're going to use the Prismatic Strands to just kind of bridge the gap until we have the 6 mana to go infinite on the Kami lock. Lead the Stampede is a very nice draw for my opponent, but their luck is then followed up by some bad luck. They only found two little elves. Opponents deciding not to play them because, well, as you can expect, their board state is already reasonable enough that they don't need two more elves. I'm just going to use the Prismatic Strands, and we're going to go from there. Since we've got another, since we got the flashback, I don't mind basically using the mana here to crack a clue, and it allows us to play some more of our tap lands just to keep our mana base going. Next turn, we can start our Kamilok if we want to. I'm just going to go ahead and eat up some of these little tokens, since we're using Prismatic Strands anyway. And they're going to play some additional creatures. Uh, they feel like they want to go wide enough to continue to threaten to go around our creatures. That's reasonable. That's probably what I would do in their position as well. Going to cash in our... Uh, because I decided I'm going to be going on the Kami Lock, I decided instead of cracking the clue, I'm just going to use the Grim Harvest. And this way we've started our Kami Lock ahead of schedule. Since we now have our 6 mana to go infinite on it. As long as they don't find a long bow, we're in a pretty good position. I'm basically hoping that the like one of the 3 cards that they put to the bottom off of the Lead the Stampede was their long bow if they had one main deck. And if so, then we have already won this game from this position since they don't have a way around the Kami Lock. Getting a second Grim Harvest is of course nice just in case something goes terribly wrong. And yeah, we're just going to play the waiting game. We basically just need to find a Pestilence to start making inroads to win this game. Of course, our opponent is up to 82 life, so it is going to be a long, drawn-out game, and we have to play as fast as possible. Thankfully for us, our opponent is down 5 minutes, so basically we just need to continue to play the combo lock as fast as possible, trying to run our opponent out of time. And that's about all we can really do. Chance of us being able to do that much damage is unlikely, but not unreasonable, to be honest. So, we're going to continue to use the Kami Lock, and even manage to crack the clue now. We do have the Pestilence, but we got to make sure we find an opportunity to cast that when we're not trying to use our mana for the Grim Harvest. So, I'm just going to basically block three creatures here, and we're going to use the Prismatic Strands. Uh, reason being, we want to make sure... Oh, uh, we want to make sure that we have multiple ways of protecting ourselves the turn we play the, the Pestilence. 
And we also don't want to have to worry about the Grim Harvest. I also use the Unmake there to get rid of one of the two large Elvish Vanguards, since we are going to need to use our target removal on those at some point. Uh, might as well use it there, since we had some mana available. And here, we're just going to play the Pestilence. And this is going to allow us to wipe most of the board. Uh, basically, there was also the reasonable uh, spot, since we have the Prismatic Strands in the Graveyard, of casting the Guardian of the Guild Packs. That way we don't have to worry about Pestilence removing our creatures. But uh, basically, based on the board state, the opponent just decides to attack with only the Elvish Vanguard. So I block with the Lone Missionary, since there was no need to use anything else. And here, I'm just going to wipe out the entire board and play the Guardian of the Guild Pack plus an Arrestion Cleric. So... We still have the Prismatic Strands in the Graveyard, we're now fighting just one creature, which we can infinitely chump block with the Guardian, and even if they did play the one mana spell that gives them Trample and plus X plus X for the number of elves, we're not too worried about that since we do have the Prismatic Strands. So at this point I'm feeling pretty good, we've got the lock, we've got enough life, and with the Lone Missionary and Grim Harvest we can gain as much life as we need to over a long game. So now we just need to find some way of doing 155 damage to our opponent. So this is going to go pretty quick. Uh, basically we're just going to be passing. Uh, we got to you know keep it on our life total, make sure it doesn't get too low, but as you can see we're going to start doing the Lone Missionary combo where we're just going to be swinging for some damage, activate Pestilence, use Grim Harvest to get back Lone Missionary, cast Lone Missionary, gain a ton of life. We're going to keep this loop going just to make sure that our life total stays high enough to continue to board wipe them over and over again. And we're just going to be swinging in whenever possible just to get in a bit of damage. Uh, here I'm offering some trades. Our opponent decides not to go for it, which means we just got in a little extra damage. Going to go ahead and use Pestilence, wipe the board, and Grim Harvest combo to get extra lone missionaries. They do find a lead the stampede, but they don't have enough mana to cast anything really. That's fine by us. Going to continue to get in for a lot of damage. And keep the loop going of trying to gain as much life as possible because we don't know how long we're going to have to be wiping their board. We also need to play as quick as possible since our life, our, the, the clock is a big thing here. We're up by 4 minutes, but even if we win this one uh, through killing them, we need to make sure we have enough time to win a second game. And yeah, we're just going to continue to wipe their board. And isn't really much else to it at this point. We're just going to chip in for damage. We're going to... We don't have to... Like, they have no way game one of interrupting the Guardian Guild Pact and Pestilence. So it's just a matter of playing as fast as possible and wiping their board, getting it for damage, because we've managed to get them down to 117. So a lot of just F6ing on both sides, because they're also trying to play as fast as possible, which is perfectly reasonable. We're both doing that. I'm going to go ahead and use Pestilence three times to get rid of their creature. It means we get to reset our Lone Missionary, gain a bunch of life. It's all about playing as fast as possible. Eventually, if we're just F6ing back and forth, we will win through combat damage. We are also ahead on the card count in libraries, so we're not going to have to worry about decking out. If you've been wondering why my clues are just sitting there for this entire part of the game, it's because our locks have already been established. Uh, drawing additional cards just gives, like we need to make sure that we're winning in every aspect of the game. We need to be ahead on life, or at least have enough life to continually wipe their board. We need to be ahead on cards, ahead on time. Since we've got all that going for us, as you can see, we got to just play as fast as possible. As soon as they play a creature, we're just going to wipe the board, and then continuing to do the Grim Harvest combo. I've actually gone ahead and gotten a bunch of Russian clears since our life total is high enough. This allows us to wipe the board without killing all of our creatures. And it just means we have to play it quite a bit faster. So now we're just chipping in for a good, you know, 7 damage a turn. It's only going to take us another 10 or so turns to win the game. So, you know, a nice speedy victory. Opponent is deciding to play some additional cards. That is fine. I'm just going to go ahead and use Pestilence, get back both of our Grim Hardists. Yeah. Just going to keep on grinding through. At this point... Yeah, you've seen the loop quite a few times, and you can see our graveyard is basically a toolbox at this point. If we wanted to draw additional cards, we get back Thraven Inspectors. If we wanted to go Kami Lock, we got those. Life Gain, we've got Lone Missionaries, so everything we could want.
opponent is still just trying to like in the else position you do need to continue to play this game out uh, basically you like you've spent a lot of time to build up that much life total so you need to make the Orzhov pestilence deck spend the time back actually trying to win the game they get another lead the stampede and get a bunch of cards I don't feel like they definitely should be casting at least something every turn just to make us continue to spend our time doing pestilence combos and our opponent does end up conceding here. I feel like they should have just been kind of like F6ing at the very least just to make us burn out our clock. Because right now, a three minute gap going into game two is a rather insurmountable advantage. So, yeah. Long grindy one, but we managed to get there. We're going to go on to game number two. Hope I haven't lost you yet. So, for the sideboard, we're going to take out all the Chainer's Edicts for the target removal, just to make sure we're getting rid of the cards we do not want them to have. Going to bring in the Core Sanctifiers, because we got to make sure we've got a way out from the Viridian Longbow. And I'm also going to bring in the Coalition Honor Guards, that turns off a lot of their target effects, especially since we did see that they do have the plus X plus X guy. What is that, the, the Huntmaster? No, that's the other one. Uh, you guys know which one it is. So, we're going to take out the... Palace Sentinels, because they can go wide around it. Going to take out one Thraven Inspector. It doesn't really do a whole lot in this matchup. It basically just cycles. And we're going to take out the Chainer's Edicts. And that's about it. Alright, let's jump into it. Taking a look at our opening hand. Easy mulligan. And this isn't a great hand, but our opponent also mulliganed. This hand has all of the mana sources that we need. So basically as long as we get some kind of either card draw, some extra removal spells, something to take advantage of the mana like a Kami Lock, this is a good spot. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep it. I feel like this is better than just going to some random five hand. Taking a look at our top card, it is... Our opponent ended up having to go down to five. That's rather unfortunate. Uh, we did get a snuff out on top. I thought about this for a little while and I decided to keep it just because having two removal spells to get rid of two problematic creatures that's likely to buy us more time than just a random card on top of our library so let's jump into it gonna be happy cycling these Ash Barons because that will thin out our deck and make it a little less likely to draw lands going forward lead the stampede on turn two does not bode well especially when they reveal a ton of cards they also played a land grant, so we did know their entire hand, so I guess we can start trimming this down. Uh, so they are playing out their cards. Uh, Timberwatch Elf, that's the card name that I was missing. And yes, so we go ahead and disfigure the Timberwatch Elf, because that is one of those dangerous cards that we are afraid of. We're going to hold the snuff out uh, for something else that's dangerous if it comes up. And we do have a... we got the Pestilences that we really want, so... We're basically just going to look for some position where we can lock up the board. If they play anything particularly dangerous, we're going to use the snuff out uh, here. Basically, I decide that I'd rather just see what they're going to do and use the snuff out on the Vanguard. It may have been reasonable to cast the Pestilence and use the snuff out using life, but the reason why I went with this play, because uh, I think some people are going to wonder, Basically, by using the Snuff Out this turn and not playing the Pestilence, this is playing around um, any kind of enchantment hate. Basically, we're going to be able to play the Plains next turn, play the Pestilence, and crack it for one, wiping out most of the board immediately. So even if they do have enchantment removal, it sets us up in a relatively decent position. Of course, now that they're playing the Huntmaster, um, it does mean that we're going to be taking five next turn, and if they do have enchantment removal, we're probably still in a bad position. But... Imagine a world where they he decided not to, uh, he or she decided not to play that this turn. Um, this play makes a lot of sense because they'd probably be playing more one ones. But basically, we just want to play around any kind of enchantment removal at this position. So we're just going to go ahead with that plan. Crack it for one. We're going to be taking five damage here, which is not good for us, but should be able to be should be workable. I'm just going to go ahead and since we drew a creature to play, I'm going to use the Pestilence for three, wipe out the board, and we get the Kami the False Hope, Kami of False Hope, onto the battlefield to keep our Pestilence around. They don't play many things that can remove it unless they have gut shots, which, you know, is possible, but isn't really much we can do about that, and we do have a second Pestilence if it ever came down to it. I second lead the Stampede, 
means our opponent is resetting their hand. So, I believe we... That's what they have in their hand currently. Elvish Vanguard comes down. And there's a Priest. Alright, so currently... I We have plenty of options for when to use our Pestilence, but I'm actually going to use the Prismatic Strands here. Uh, I should have blocks, but I was skipping through it pretty quick. I'm actually very conscious of the time in this one, since we have a 3 minute time advantage. And I'm just looking to fog out plenty of turns. I'm just going to keep the Pestilence on the board as a way of sweeping out the board. Uh, the reason why I'm doing it this way is, you'll probably notice our life total is 4, so we really only have one full-on board wipe left, based on the hand that we have. And because of that, I'm basically looking to use the Doomblade to remove the Elvish Vanguard, and the Pestilence would be able to remove everything else. We really need to manage these four life points very carefully from this point going forward. So since they're only swinging at the Elvish Vanguard, I'm just going to throw this in front, just to see what they have, because it is possible they could play something much more dangerous, like the Huntmaster for me to Doomblade, although they are playing another Leave the Stampede, so our opponent is drawing quite well this game. I'm really surprised that they're not playing additional cards, seeing as we do only have four life points, but I guess they think their board presence is already good enough for us to need to use the Pestilence. So I'm just going to continue to wait to see how things go. Looks like this is the turn where our opponent is deciding to play a lot of cards. The Huntmaster is now coming down. And so... I haven't mentioned this earlier in the series, uh, but when you're playing against elves, especially with a slow deck like Horzoth Pestilence, you need to make sure you're yielding to everything. There's the Gleeval Sabotage looking to destroy our Pestilence. So I crack one of the Kamis just to prevent any combat damage this turn. And I'm just going to make sure I wipe the board now, um, since we do have enough life total to work with because we got the Arrestion Cleric. I don't want to lose the Cleric. Uh, because we need to make sure we have a green or a creature for prismatic strands, and then I also use the doom blade to get rid of the elvish vanguard. The reason why we're doing it this way is we know we have a uh, pestilence to wipe away everything else later on. We can use the prismatic strands here on green. What this is going to do is mark one damage onto the hunt master, allow us to activate the pestilence for two, wiping out their entire board. We're now in a very advantageous position, especially since. We're now going to be able to reset the Arrestion Cleric just to make sure we're gaining a ton of life. And this will allow us to have at least one, two, maybe three board wipes left out of our Pestilence. Looks like our opponent is running out of gas or is looking for another, uh, another Gleeful Sabotage to get rid of our Pestilence. And they decide to start running out some creatures since basically if they don't, we are just going to kill them since we can attack and use our Pestilence. But... Uh, this is That turn was a little too late since we just activated the Pestilence, swing in for 5, and we were going to win the game. So, we did manage to go 5-0 without dropping a single game with Kamilok Orzov Pestilence. Uh, I've been working on this deck for a while, and I think it is a great deck, especially when you're playing against Elves and Boros Monarch. And that seems to be what we were playing. We played 4 of our 5 games against. Uh, Affinity is a bit disfavored, but... It's very slight. It's like a 50-50, maybe a 55-45, and we managed to have relatively good draws against them there. So I hope you've enjoyed the series, and if you did, please like, comment, subscribe. Let's me know to keep making the content, and I will try to make it more often than once every two weeks. Um, yeah, I guess on the other side, uh, for everyone who's still here and still watching, um, I've been debating on what kind of deck to play next. I've been having a bit of a hard time piloting Orzov Pestilence through the challenges, since the challenges are seven matches back to back. Uh, as you can see, this deck gets a little grueling, and so mistakes do start to build up, and it's kind of hard to keep a perfect play going through the whole thing, especially once you're going to time like nearly every single game. So I've been debating on whether or not to go back to some Boros Monarch, or if I should start working on learning how to play Tron, even though I've been really reluctant to do that. If you think that that's the deck I should play next, uh, let me know. Or I was thinking of pulling out my Sultai Land Destruction deck uh, that I played and built a while back, since I feel like the metagame is going to a bit more control Tron heavy. Uh, that deck is good in that metagame. And I guess the fourth option is, do you want me to continue to pilot this game to see another version 
of the Kami Lock Pestilence in action. So I'm going to leave a, a poll link in the description below. Uh, let me know which of those four decks you think I should play uh, next or play over the next little while to produce some videos on. And yeah, thank you very much everyone for watching. Have yourselves a wonderful day.